Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hello. And happy birthday to <laughs> me. Yeah, happy birthday. You <laughs> beat me to it. Yep. <laughs> I sure did. Ha uh-huh. But actually, I know I said last week was my birthday, but this is really my birthday episode. Um, If you guys are listening, when it drops, my birthday was yesterday. Mm-hmm. So not past Taylor. Like me right now, I'm still a young baby spry 25-year-old. <laughs> Um, but when this comes out, I will be 26. So. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, you're catching up to me. Mm, T. That's the T right there. <laughs> We're about to enter the space and time that means and are the same age. Yeah. Just is it like, most of the time? Yeah, it's literally like, what, two and a half months? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what a good time that is. <gasps> yeah. So. <laughs> so there we go. That's funny. And then you can't, so you can't make fun of me for being old nope. at this time. No, can't. You know? Yeah, it's like the ran- it's like the few weeks of the year. Yeah, you should just shut up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so we have more to talk about than just your birthday. Sorry. Indeed, but I guess. um, uh, we just went to a concert, and you're going to another concert too. But let's talk about the one we went went to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we went and saw Louis Tomlinson from One Direction. If you don't know, and live under a rock, and our name yeah. Patrick Starr. Yeah. Um, he was him. so good. Oh, guys, my little heart couldn't take it. He was singing One Direction. I wanted to sob. Yeah. Violently. But it was, um, really hot. Really hot. Oh my God. That was yes. the only downfall. Yeah. Honestly, like once the sun set, it was a oh, little bit we better. We were fine once the sun set, but boy, it was beaten down. It was really, directly. It was really bad. It was directly Oh, my yeah. goodness. People were, like, passing out, fainting, needing water, having heat strokes. Yeah. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that's, see, that's one thing about concerts that are in July. Mm-hmm. Like, the yeah. hottest month. Yeah. Um, Indeed. Yeah, that was pretty bad. But also, um, th- the fans that are at the Louis concerts, oh, my gosh. I mean, so like great. none other, truly. They are, because... Um, we even got some bracelets. I know. People were giving us <laughs> bracelets and we didn't even have any to trade with them. They were just yeah. giving us bracelets, guys. Yeah. It was just so, that was fun. Man, it was just the girlies having a grand yes. old time. Honestly true. And speaking of the girlies, like we went and saw the Barbie movie. Yay. Which is you guys. know we're just full of um <laughs> you know, great energy from these both of these things. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. If you haven't seen Barbie, that's a big fumble on your part. You need to go see Barbie. Yeah, honestly, because, like, we're um, talking about this in the past tense, like, a week ago, yeah, basically. Yeah, I saw it, like, a week and, like, ago, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, by the time this episode comes out, if you haven't seen it by now, go see it. <laughs> go see it, literally, go see it. <laughs> also, I saw Oppenheimer. It was very good, too. Oh, I haven't. Very I think different vibe but, than Barbie. Yeah. I went, like, during... The whole Barbenheimer weekend and everything, but yes, yeah, um, yeah, both movies 10 out of 10 crazy, yeah. Um, I did actually want to mention though, so I saw people on like TikTok talking about um, their like the Barbies that they used to play with mm-hmm. and stuff, and it reminded me of one that I used to have. Um, and I looked her up just to see like what I was like, ah. what am I, what am I remembering, but it was called um. A mystery squad. It was the oh, mystery squad Barbie. I love that. And yes, and she was like kind of like a spy, like spy. Wow. Action. Um, she had like these night vision goggles, um, a little detector that could tell if you're lying or not. I think. Wow. And which I don't know how that works, but yeah. <laughs> um, and they she had like s- shoes that turned into roller skates. Oh my gosh! I love that. Um, and basically, like, I don't know. I feel like me loving that doll just really, like, foreshadowed us the doing future. this. Because I yeah. feel like this is, like, a little bit similar to, like, you know, Mystery. I mean, it's literally Mystery Squad, and we cover mysteries. Yeah, so. we're literally the Mysteries, Myths, and Legends squad. So so there we go. That um, is actually really crazy. Yeah, and I loved her. She had, like, a shirt with, like, a lightning bolt on it. And um, what else? Oh, there was some... Um, there's sunglasses that come with the doll that have like mirrors on this, like what? on the inside of the sunglasses, if you can imagine that. Yeah. So you can see behind you. <laughs> Stop. I love that. So you can spy. You can be the spy too. We yeah. always do say that you have a third eye in the back of your head. Well, there you go. <laughs> Maybe I'm just wearing those glasses. Exactly. Wow. I love that. 
I yeah. um di- I really was not a doll girly. Uh, mm-hmm. If you listen to any of our doll episodes, I think I talk about how like I really was scared of them when I yeah, was. Yeah, honestly, kid. you always say you hate dolls. <laughs> yeah, and I always have, even when I was little. Um, yeah. Like I did have a few dolls, and I did have a few Barbies, but they weren't mine. Like nobody bought them for me, like as a Barbie. Right. Maybe I think I did have like the original regular. What is her name from the movie? The like. Literally oh, stereotypical. Stereotypical Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think I had just like a regular Barbie. So, yeah. So you know yeah. that's not very fun, nor interesting. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I have one of those. I too, just but. wasn't really a Barbie girl. Was not really a doll girl. Yeah. Well. At all. I also used to play the online, like, Barbie games. Oh, no, I did do that. Like, the painting the nails. There's that one. And there was the one where you could, like, take care of the baby. I never did that. Oh, I used to do that one. (laughs) Babysitting. (laughs) Wow, you just Um, think back. It really has foreshadowed our entire lives, hasn't it? (laughs) A little bit, yeah. Um, And, okay, so another thing about the movie, and then we can shut up, but I just want to say, like, I did cry three times during the movie. Yeah, so like I, I that's did how too. much it meant to me. Three, three, maybe four, for me. I, yes. I can't really remember. I'm definitely gonna go back and see it again because I really. I literally see it again. within the first few minutes, I was already like crying. Oh no! See, it took me a little bit, but I'll. I mean, Ugh. I'll talk to you about it afterwards, just because it's like a spoiler. But yeah, like true. the beginning part, oh my god, I was just like, mm-hmm. it's just like. I don't know. It was um, just unfortunately, so... I can't even lie to you, Savannah. I, we missed the beginning. <gasps> See, maybe that's why you did. <laughs> um, I was gonna say I don't even know what you're talking about, but I forgot. Yeah, we're really bad at being on time at any single thing. I mean, you know See, that about me. But it also might just be me because I don't know. No, I don't think so because I've actually I do know what you're talking about. It was just like empowering. I was mm-hmm. like, I mean. I guess I can just say it. Um, if, yeah. if you don't want spoiler, just fast forward. But it's basically like talking about how there was only like baby dolls for the longest time, and then like Barbie came along because she was like the first one, first doll to be like older, and you don't have to be a mom to play mm-hmm. with her, or like yeah. you don't have to pretend to be a mom. Yeah. And I was like, that's oh my god, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> like that's so cute. Yeah, I like that's that so part. good for girls. So, yeah. But no, it really is so good. Yeah. It's a good message. So, so anyways. It. Love Barbs. Also, the music in that movie is so fire. We've been oh, listening yes. to the soundtrack nonstop. I know. I was listening to it this morning, too. Because I'm bad so. like a Barbie. Oh, when that song Literally. started playing, we laughed so <laughs> hard. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Anyway. But, okay. Last thing. One last thing. And we'll okay, get into what thing. we have to talk about. <laughs> is that, in case you don't know, I have, like, a movie pass. And so, I get to see, like, all movies, like, for free. So, see, you're so lucky. Yeah. I need to do that. But, like, I don't think the theater by me does it. The grand. Oh, I'm going to hurt myself. Yeah, that's horrible. But, um, yeah. I mean, there are AMCs, though. I guess I can go there. That's true. That's true. But, I so, because of that, I am going to see a movie right after we record this. Love and that. it's called Talk to Me, I think. And it's supposed to be the scariest movie of 2023. Um, oh. It looks pretty scary. I don't really know what it's about other than like a game. So, you know, update mm. next week on that and how scary it was. I hope you I know, get real scared. Okay. I, before we move on, I saw something about a movie. It's like something at a theater that that a theater was doing where they would give you a ticket to a movie that's not out yet, but it's like oh, yeah. secret. Yeah, they do that at my Yeah, theater. like have you done that? No, I haven't, but I want to. It's only on Mondays and I'm normally busy on Mondays. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you can yeah. like pay. I, w- I would have to pay for it, but it's only $5. It's like $5 and you don't know what movie you're seeing, but it's like an unreleased new movie coming out soon. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. I should do that. Yeah. But I don't mm. know if it's only at Regal Theaters. Okay. Okay. Is. So that's where you have yours mm-hmm. is at Regal. Yeah, Regal. So, this is not sponsored by Regal. In fact, yeah, you we should. don't have any. Do we have a Regal? No, in not in Winston. <sighs> I thought you were going to AMC because I thought they had it. No, they do have one AMC, but I don't know if it's the five dollars thing. But yeah, or the um movie pass. Yeah. Mm. Oh, they probably do. But interesting. Okay. anyways, movie <clears throat> podcast aside, I suppose. Um, yes. It's our podcast before the real podcast. Um, yeah. You know, all of our real fans care about this. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All of our real fans and our family members that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> none of my family is listening. That just want to hear about our... What? <laughs> I said none of my family is listening. 
Doesn't uh, Josh listen sometimes? Oh, sometimes. <laughs> hey, Josh, if you're listening. Yeah, hi, Josh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> um, um, okay, so I guess I'll get started. Let's do it. So, this week I have something that's like, di- like it's kind of different because me and Taylor both know about it. In- indeed, and <laughs> we've never had this experience, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, over the weekend we went to this concert, right, in Raleigh, um, and afterwards we, you know, we spent the night and then we were like, okay, well let's do something since we're in Raleigh, and we went to the Mordecai house which is the oldest house in Raleigh. Mm-hmm. So we're trying, to, we're trying to find some ghosts out there. Yeah, we were like, we might as well, if we're already together, do something for the podcast. Exactly. Um, and I did take some pictures and stuff. We did, we tried to take a video, but we were like... Just, it was way too awkward because yeah. we got very lucky, honestly. Yes. <laughs> and got a private tour yeah. of the whole property. Yeah, just I don't know because how we, nobody else yeah. signed up for the tour at the same time. Yeah, but it's like, it blows my mind a little bit because we saw the tour that started like right before us and there was like 15 people. And then yeah. we go and there's nobody. I know, like, yeah. private tour. And we're like, perfect. That was <laughs> so weird. I guess, I mean, we did go at noon. Like, is that lunchtime? Yeah, I guess I it's know. lunchtime. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, like Taylor, you can jump in if you feel like you want to say something about it um just because you know we both went on this tour but anyways so yeah like taylor said um we got sort of like a private tour um and our tour guide she was awesome dude she was so cool and i'm so sad that i don't remember her name i know that's so bad (laughs) literally shout out to them though like i know and she even said so cool she even said like oh let us know when this episode's out so we might even like we're probably gonna like let them know and yeah. she's gonna listen to this and be like they don't remember my no name. i'm so sorry i'm i literally forget everybody's name immediately after you tell me, me. too every yeah, single me time <laughs> but she um, was the best she gave us so much information she really it did. was just amazing yes uh, and actually, we're kind of protecting her a little bit because I did ask about ghosts, of course. Like, I was like, is this place haunted? Right, we you had know, let to. us know. You know, we had to do that. And she sort of said, like, we're not supposed to say anything, but I will. Right, so we are protecting her. So yeah, that's a good thing. So, actually, yeah. we do remember her name. We're just not telling you her name. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Erase the last five seconds or ten, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so... So when I asked about it being haunted and stuff, she did tell us that this group called the Ghost Guild um, has investigated the property a few times. So that's cool. Um, There's just like a local group in Raleigh. Uh, And they also, like the the gift shop at this place, they had a t-shirt that said, I was haunted by the Mordecai ghost. <laughs> that shirt was so cute. Yeah, which is like, okay, you have a shirt that says ghost on it, but you're not allowed to tell people about ghosts. Right, that's like, okay. true. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so in the beginning of this tour, you know, before we sort of like, before we got there, we thought it was pronounced Mordecai. Mm-hmm. Because, you that's know, how that's, it's spelled. that's exactly how it's spelled. Yeah, Mordecai. But she told us that it was originally pronounced Mordecai, and then it changed pronunciation when the family moved to the south, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. And she said just, like, the accent of the people in the area sort of changed it to Mordecai. Mm-hmm. You know, we got that southern draw down here. Yeah, which is like I guess, but like, do people still talk like that? I guess. Um, you know, honestly, I can't lie. Some of my family members do, but they're not even living in the South, so. Like they say, because she was saying, for example, she's like, oh, the same way people will say like Tuesday, and Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more to key. More to key. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if like the younger generation talks like that, but maybe the older. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, that's sort of how that came to be. Um, so now I'm going to try my best to keep that pronunciation throughout this. <laughs> I got like, you, because I really remember that, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the Mordecai house is the oldest house in Raleigh, as I, um, started out with. Um, and it was built in 1785. So a long, long time ago. Wow. 
and it was built in downtown Raleigh. Like smack dab in the middle. Yes. Of everything. And it's actually older than the city of Raleigh itself. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, the house was built by Joel Lane, uh, who people actually consider the father of Raleigh because he introduced legislation, um, that word was hard to say for some reason, introduced legislation to found Wake County, so the county that Raleigh's in, Mm -hmm. in 1771, um, and that was, like, still British-run colonial... (laughs) Wow. Colonial That's era. so wild. Yeah, so he founded the county back then, I guess. And in 1792, Lane sold a thousand acres of land to the state of North Carolina uh, to build Raleigh. So, the, there you go. That's so much <laughs> land. That's crazy. So, yeah, he sold a thousand acres to build Raleigh as the state capital. Which That's is, like, cool. so crazy to me because it's like... He sold this land that he just, like, went there and got. Right. That like, he did he buy this? Doubt it. <laughs> I highly doubt it. Like, how does that work? I don't know. <laughs> they made their own rules. Very true. Yes, definitely. Uh, so, anyways, he built this house for his son, Henry. And then Henry, um, he had his family and had some children. But when he died... His daughter, Margaret, uh, married a man named Moses Mordecai. And Moses was a lawyer, and he was also, um, had, he was from Ashkenazi Jewish descent, and he was actually one of the original 300 Jewish families in the U.S. He was, like, part of one of, part of that group. Wow. That's just so mind-blowing to me. Yeah, it's an interesting part of, like, the history because Mm -hmm. it just brings in the fact that he was, like, part of a marginalized group. Yeah. Because of his religion, you know? Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it's just interesting to note. Um, It does not take away some of the bad things that this family does, but... Absolutely not. In fact, it confuses me a little bit. Me too, but we'll just keep going. So, you know... He they they get the house together and you know now it's now it's theirs. So after they get married and they settle in, Margaret sadly passes away. Aw, Margaret, rest in peace. Yeah, but after that, she's not resting in peace because her husband, um, Moses, marries her sister. Oh, Margaret, what the heck? Girl? Yeah, so that's tough. M- Moses marries her sister, Anne. That's such a bad move, Moses. Yeah, but he just wants to keep the house and the property. Mm, even worse. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, and Margaret and Moses did not have any children, but Moses and Anne did. Um, Moses and Anne had four children, Margaret Lane, so they named one after. Oh, how sweet. Margaret, yeah. Jacob, Ellen, and Henry. And in the next generation, I won't really list off all the kids because it's, you know, <laughs> just too much. Honestly, but yeah. one of the prominent people in this story is George Washington Mordecai. Mm-hmm. What a name. Yes, it's such a name, isn't it? They really looked after George Washington. <laughs> yeah, they did. That's what a, I mean, I guess it makes sense for the time, but that's so crazy to think about now. I know. I know. It does. <laughs> It is weird to think about. <laughs> so, uh, George Washington Mordecai was the son of Jacob. So, when I mention him later, you'll know where he is in the, like, line. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that, like, gives you an idea of the family a little bit. So, the home was now the Mordecai house. It was originally the Lane house. Now it's the Mordecai house. And it was actually passed down for five generations. Wow. Yeah. So, a house that stays in the family like that, I feel like it's bound to have ghosts, you know? Yeah, I think that's probably one of the most shocking things that we learned. Like, one of the first most shocking things that we learned was that this house was, like, literally... It's, like, belonged to that family the whole time it's been built. 
Like, yeah. that's crazy. I cannot yeah. even imagine how much history. And, like, we always talk about how, what are they called? The um, residual hauntings. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. how common they are in places that this happened. And then just, like, all the, like, I just can't. There's so much history here. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. Hmm. Um. But, yeah, like, since since it was, like, passed down like this, I feel like, the, yeah, the residual hauntings and stuff, it's, like, just more common because it's, like, people have been there for a while, you know, they have been there, like, their whole entire life. Mm-hmm. And they've all yeah. been running it, like, the same and way, too. Yes, yes. And, uh, um, like, a lot of, like, this used to happen a lot, actually, um, like houses would just get passed down. I mean, yeah, it's not very. It's not as common nowadays. That's, I mean, houses were way harder to build back then. True. Now yeah. they throw them up in like a day. And they're like, yeah, here's your honestly. brand new three story house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's made out of like plywood. <laughs> yeah, they're like such bad quality. I mean, cardboard. <laughs> yeah, like old houses used to be like way better quality. But anyways, yeah. uh, that's you know, if you really think about it though, that's probably why old houses are more haunted like we always say like oh this house is really old it's bound to be haunted but it's like why it's probably because it's been passed down so many times to yeah. the same family it's stayed in the same family yeah that makes so much sense so i don't know that's just something to think about mm-hmm. uh but yeah let's go through the house a little bit this house was originally it was just like four rooms and then moses acquired it And then he sort of, like, added on some rooms. He actually added on, like, a whole side of the house. And it eventually grew into a 600-acre plantation. Mm. (laughs) So we love Mm -mm -mm. that. We hate that. Yeah, we really Uh, do. So the... And Mordecai Park, where, uh, where it is, like, present day... It's, you know, not the full 600 acres anymore. It's just, I actually don't know how many acres. Yeah, maybe it's like three. <laughs> like, not that many. <laughs> it's pretty, like, small comparatively. Uh, but the Mordecai Park that we went to, it had some other buildings on it that were not originally there. They were moved there in, like, the 1970s mm-hmm. for preservation purposes. Um, so there's like the main Mordecai house, which is still in its original uh, foundation. There is the smoke house, which is original. And it actually has engravings on the back, but I'll get back to that. There is a plantation office, which is original. And there's there's a recreated Ellen Mordecai garden. Um which is really cute. We went in there and we ate peaches we off did. the tree. We did. She was like, please go eat a peach off the peach tree. And we said, say less. Yes. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Um, they were not ripe, but it's okay. They, they were not ripe, but to be not ripe, they were still pretty good. Yeah, honestly. There is the Allen Kitchen, which I don't think we really like. We're allowed to go inside, right? No, yeah. They said it's the... No. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, there was the Andrew Johnson birthplace, which is not original to the property. That one was moved, which is interesting, like, just because, yeah, I just didn't realize that was going to be there. <laughs> um, I had no idea that was going to be there. And if you don't know who that is, he was a president. And mm-hmm. I just could not believe, I didn't even realize that's where we were until she said it about like four times. And I was like, wait, this is where he was born? Yes, it was, like, where he was born and, like, lived his childhood. Yeah. That's crazy, though. <laughs> so, it's, like, a little house, you know. From like, in the a, smallest house you've ever seen. From the 1790s. <laughs> the staircase was literally a ladder. Yes, yes. Uh, it was a little bit creepy, not gonna lie. It was very dark. Yeah. Um, there was also a federal building... Um, and there was a Badger, the Badger Iridale Law Office. And she was saying, like, good things about that law office. Like, didn't she say that, uh, they would, the people at that office would, like, help enslave, formerly enslaved people? Yeah, 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 yeah. When nobody else would? Yep. 
Yeah, so that office, that was moved onto the property. And there was also the St. Mark's Chapel, which was moved onto the property, which I'll get to a little bit later. Taylor thought it was creepy. Very much so. <laughs> uh, and there's some other things on here that I don't know if we saw. The uh, Bucal Danielson House and the Mordecai or Mordecai Spring. Mm-mm, no, don't think we saw that. Yeah. So anyways, there's a lot to see on this whole property. Um, Some original, some not. Some haunted, some not. (laughs) True. So let's go through a little bit more. Uh, And also I do want to mention, yes, the family had enslaved people. Very unfortunately. But this was the South in the 1700s, 1800s. And this was very very prevalent in North Carolina during that Mm. time. Yep. So, you know, definitely not to excuse them or anything, but, you know, yeah. It just... uh, The Mordecai House Museum, like, the whole museum and, like, park, the historical society, they do a great job in recognizing the fact that there were enslaved people on here. Yeah. um, On the property, and they, like, speak about it during the tour... And in the visitor center, there's, like, you know, the history of these people on the walls. um, Sort of, yeah, like, telling about their lives and stuff. And um, afterwards, they actually gave us a packet of some stories from formerly enslaved people. And their, their experience on that specific property which is really interesting to like have been there and then hear them say like oh mr mordecai or mr mordecai he did this or he was like this um i actually read through it uh last night and it was kind of bad it Um, was bad yeah i was reading it it was really bad like he they were one person was talking about how um I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was one of, of course, it was one of the Mordecai men, but I'm like, I don't remember which one um, would, like, beat these enslaved people, like, very badly. Ugh, it makes me sick. And just, like, for no reason. Of course, yeah, that's... So it's just awful. Yeah, they, these Mordecai men did some very questionable things all the time. Yeah, and they would would say, say, like, in these stories, they were like, oh, yeah, like, this guy was, he was way better then this other guy like you would want him around not him and Mm -hmm. but it's just like it's still just horrible either way it really no it really it's like is is it worse is it better or worse for your enslaver to be nice because it's like right because they're not nice nice regardless you know right it is crazy but no i do think that tour like we've toured many a haunted house (laughs) in our days and i think that one really did like is the one that did not did it justice, but, like, really talked about the history of the enslaved people. Like, more. Yes. If not yes. more, like, the same amount as the actual family who lived there, who owned them. So, you yeah. know, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Because, yeah, other other places don't really do do that. Yeah, they kind of, like, try to hide. Not hide it, but just, like you know, try to skim little. over it. You mm-hmm. know, glaze over it. Mm-hmm. And it's not something we should glaze over. So, that's cool that they did mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, honestly, like, when I walked in and saw that they had, like, little pride flags for free, I was like, okay, these people are good. Yeah, I was like, okay, we're in a good place. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And yes, we did take the pride flags that were free. So we were curious. Yes, we did. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So, um, when I mentioned the smokehouse with the engravings on the back, um, they... uh, our tour guide she did say that the engravings were most likely from people who worked in the smokehouse um who were you know enslaved to work in there uh and they were like years and like dates on the back so it's kind of cool to see yeah it really was cool to see that it was there from you know t- yeah. what 200 years ago yeah and some like, of them were harder to read but you could definitely still make out like what they were saying yeah it's just crazy that they haven't like weathered down yes yeah uh and 
Okay, so let's get into sort of like the atmosphere of the house and some of the, the ghostly happenings. So after a while of the Mordekis living here, um, it was kind of just mainly the women of the house and, and of course the enslaved, um, which, you know, don't count to them. So, no, you know, not to them at all. Um, but it's the 1800s, you know, uh, you need a man to do things like legally. <laughs> yeah. So the original man of the house sort of died, uh, and they brought in George Washington Mordecai to look over, uh, to, he like took over as man of the house. And, um, he had a law office slash just like plantation office on the property and uh the tour guide she said that she was like in there one day and a bunch of people I think she said it was her and a few other people who worked at the um like worked there and they all left in front of her and then she was the last one out and she went to close the door and it pulled back on her Mm -mm. to like open back up yeah that's so scary yeah and she like almost wanted to think nothing of it but she's like no like definitely something (laughs) just right and she said that there was this like school field trip there and like there were just like a bunch of kids playing around watching her and she just had to like play it off (laughs) oh right she did say that yeah yeah She's like, I just tried to remain calm and cool and collected. She's like, I can't freak out. I can't freak out. Yeah. (laughs) But that's crazy. Like, she really felt like a ghost really was, like, pulling the door open and being like, no, stay. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you really um, look into how awful George Washington Mordecai was, she's like, like, he probably was the one to do that. Yeah. (laughs) Disgusting. Ew, 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 ew. Um... Okay, so next little ghostly story. Some people say that when the moon is high, um, which I guess is every night, I don't know, they can see (laughs) a ghostly figure standing on the high balcony in a gray 1800s dress. Ooh, that is very spooks my gooks. Yes, and others who have been inside the home at night say that they have seen a figure that's like similar to what I just described um, going down the stairwell. Ew. Ew. I I can just like yeah. picture it very well and it actually sickens me. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I know, like once we've been in there, it's like ooh. ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh and there's also an antique piano in the parlor that apparently will play on its own. That is so spooky. I kinda don't remember seeing a piano. I don't remember seeing a piano either. I remember seeing something in the chapel, but Yeah, there was an organ in the chapel. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But anyway, the piano in the parlor will play on its own, and it will play, like, a somber melody. Mm-mm. That and, like, some me. people even say that a gray mist hovers over the keys. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, next, next one. Um, Ellen's room. So, Ellen was the, um... She was one of the daughters of uh, Moses and Margaret. No, Mo- Moses no, her and sister. Anne. Yeah. I believe it was this Ellen. Unless it's like, you know, they named another No, it's that Ellen. Girl Ellen. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, did I not follow the family tree down enough? No, you did. Okay. It's, that, it's the daughter of Moses. Yeah. So Ellen, in her room, she sort of like... let go into her history a little bit she had a rough time she was married and was uh soon after like having a child i think she was sent into an asylum slash hospital or maybe she didn't have a child and she was just sent to a hospital for hysteria by her husband and Mm -hmm. her sisters actually went and got her out so that's good and she ended up living the rest of her life in the house on like quote extended vacations from her husband um (laughs) this was their way to like not have like a divorce right but be separated yeah yeah and so anyways there is a painting in her room above her fireplace 
uh, of, it's a painting of her husband as a baby. <laughs> her husband, who she's separated from and hates. Right. And <laughs> who sent her away to who an asylum. Who sent her to an asylum. Uh, so anyways, yeah. There's a painting of him in there. Because, you know, whoever decorated this house to be a museum really wanted to mess with her, I guess. Uh, so this painting has been found on the ground a few times. And it's also like... People just say, like, she's thrown it off the wall, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, across the room. And yes, no, that across the room. was, like, the first thing I noticed when we walked into that room. And the second I saw it, I was like, that painting looks like it has been through it, boy. Yes, it does. She like, is falling the, apart. The frame is missing pieces. <laughs> yeah. Because, and the, um, our tour guide, she said that they have the pieces in, like, a little bag because they're like, we're not going to put it back on there since she keeps throwing it across the room. Exactly. I wouldn't put it back on there either. So basically she's redecorating um, <laughs> or she just, you know, she probably sees it and she's like, ew, get him out of my face. Literally. She's like, I literally am separated from him. I do not want to see him every second of every day. It, yeah, exactly. I would be the same way in Girly Pop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I honestly, like, in that room, I feel like I felt sort of an energy like that. I was like, oh. Honestly, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, some other random things that our guide mentioned, uh, that in the closets, the closets on the, um, I guess on the, were they on the second floor? Yeah, they're, like, in the hallway on the second floor. Yeah, the closets there, they would open by themselves. <laughs> I was so hoping that they were going to open when we walked by them. I know. I was just I hoping. <laughs> I know. It, she even said she's like, happen. oh, you know, my, uh, like, her coworker would say that uh, it was just, like, if you step in a certain place, it would open. But, like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, I was trying to step to see if I could get it to open. But right, yeah. it didn't open either way. So, yeah, who's so. to say? Uh, she also said that in, uh, when the Ghost Guild was there, an EMF went off with the books. Oh so my the gosh. books are haunted. Guys, they have some of the oldest, like, original copies of some of the, like, the most prominent books. Yes, they really do. It's crazy. Like, the library they have there is insane, and most of them are, like, originals. Mm-hmm. It's wild. I feel like if you touch them, they would fall apart because they, mm -hmm. they look that mm -hmm. old. Um, and then the last sort of thing I wanted to mention is the chapel that uh, apparently a pew has moved during a tour before mm -hmm. okay. unexplained yeah i wish that happened to us too mm -hmm. <laughs> it did not but when we walked into that chapel before we even i didn't even realize at that point of the tour because we did like when we started the tour we did like the outside houses first that we did i had no idea like what at all was going on you know i was yeah. just following her yeah. so we were just going through all like the law office and um, Johnson's house. And then we went into this chapel and I just immediately got like the worst, worst vibe. Like it just felt heavy, heavy and very dark. Like I didn't feel anything else or like anything else. But it just did not. It The energy felt real bad in there. Mm -hmm. Real bad. See, and now I feel like there's something off with me. Cause I didn't feel that. And I'm like, well, now I need to bring Taylor places so she can see if they're haunted <laughs> So I can feel not. them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a bad energy in there. That's all that I know. Like, not, not necessarily bad, just very heavy. It felt very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do want to recommend this tour. Um, if you guys are ever, if anyone's ever in Raleigh, like, definitely go check out the Morty Key House. Um, it is... You know, the, they'll tell you more than I was able to tell you. And you'll be right in front of the thing. So, yeah. And you know, see it. Yeah. Cool, <laughs> no, I would definitely take the tour. And then you can go and see the, um, see the chapel yourself and see if you feel the same feeling. Yeah. No, seriously, go do it. It was very fun. Very informative. I learned so much that day. I know. I know. Me too. And I think actually, if you want to go, um, try to find some ghosts too aren't they doing something around halloween yeah they are apparently i don't really i didn't look into it that much but something around think, halloween is going on i want to say that it's like october 28th they're doing something there um 
Yeah. So maybe check for that Halloween, out. and they yeah they do it every year, I think. Yeah. 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 They do. So check that out if you're interested. You know. Mm-hmm. Fun. Well, see. What's interesting is that I knew you were going to cover this. You know, we talked about doing it together, but there just wasn't, we didn't ex- have too many experiences of our own to do it together. So, right, right. You know, I figured I'd go ahead and do my own story, but I was like, why not tie it in? So today for you, I have a few small hauntings from Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, okay. <laughs> Continuing Tied the trend. Um, so yeah, this is just our one big Raleigh episode. Um and so, yeah, just some basic Raleigh information. The city was founded in 1792, like you said, and it's grown into what is today North Carolina's capital city. You know, it's the big one. Um, and today it's like a major center for like tech, the, like the biggest in, on the East Coast. And which yeah, is and honestly, cool. I felt so like safe there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. It was like very it's secure. such a great good vibe vibe of a city you Mm -hmm. know yeah it was nice it was very nice um and there's it's like a real big college town too so i think that probably has something to do with it there's some of the best colleges in the world there's unc chapel hill you know nc state the big ones all of them are there Mm -hmm. meredith you know all of them so i was gonna make you wait and save this haunt to be my last story but I'm just so excited I have to tell you about it right now <laughs> okay. um, because it's something that we saw while we were there, but we just <gasps> didn't go in it. Okay. And I was like, there's no way <laughs> when I found it online, but there was a way. So there's this place. Okay. Um, it is a contemporary restaurant in downtown Raleigh and it is called Death and Taxes. Oh, right, right. We did see that. Mm-hmm. We did. So the um the building was originally constructed in 1907 and it was originally opened as a coffin shop. Which okay. we also saw that. Didn't was, you you kind Yeah, of there said was that. yeah, there was a sign. It was like coffin okay. shop and I was like, is that like a play on words for right. coffee? I wasn't we weren't sure what. We saw death and taxes but we weren't sure what it was from the outside. Yeah. Um so it's cool, you know, that I was able to find out. We should have went in there. <laughs> we really should have. So next time we're in Raleigh we should go there. Um, anywho, the so when it opened as a coffin shop, it was to handle the influx of victims of the Spanish flu epidemic that was going on in the city. The and it raged through the city from 1907 to 1912. Oh wow! Killed so many people in mm-hmm. Raleigh, which is crazy. Um, I had no idea. Guess okay, no, not guessed. Um, once the epidemic died down a little bit, the building was n- no longer needed to be a coffin shop, so they turned it into a bank, and then eventually, as it is today, a nice fancy restaurant. So that's cool. Um, but guests at the restaurant have claimed to hear really weird noises, like when nothing is like around the corner, they'll just hear hear some rumblings, and sometimes footsteps, and they're just coming from absolutely nowhere. Oh. And the most popular thing that happens in the restaurant is that you can hear a conversation between a young girl and the older, like, grown man, um, but nobody is around. Oh. Like, no, you like you cannot see anybody, but you can hear a full conversation going. And that... Okay, that's really creepy. Is really creepy. <laughs> like, I don't know if I've ever heard anything like that before. No. Um, and so, yeah. That's... That's the big old thing. What are they What are they talking about? I don't know. It didn't oh. say. And I don't really know if you can make out what they're saying, but you can just he- differentiate the voices, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I do love that it's called Death and Taxes because it was a coffin shop and a, a bank. A bank, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that really fits. Yeah. yeah, they really did. On brand for that. I love it. I love it so much. So we definitely need to go back there and check it out. Yeah. I'm we should of, have. We yeah. Should have. <laughs> we should have. We had no idea what it was, though. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's pretty creepy. But I kind of want to go eat there and then see if I can hear any conversations going on. I know. Yeah, yeah that would be crazy. Yeah. So moving along to another haunted place in Raleigh. Um, it is called the Spring Hill House. This house apparently has the oldest marked grave in Wake County, North Carolina. 
and it's located on NC State's Centennial Campus. Literally on campus is this haunted, creepy looking house. So they have, oh, it's a house? Mm -hmm. It's a literal house. But it has a grave? (laughs) Yeah. In fact, um, yeah, so historians actually believe that there are several other unmarked graves on the property. And they've done extensive research on this house and have so far found 26 bodies on the property. how many? 26. Oh, my God. Yep, all in unmarked graves. And they, I don't think that they've been able to find out who these people are. How big is this property? Mm, I mean, well, it's on campus, on, like, main campus of NC State. So, you know, I didn't look up the acreage, but. Oh, my gosh. It looks like a regular house, like a regular creepy house, like, on some land. It really does. It's very creepy looking. Um, The oldest grave, by the way, belongs to a man whose name I did not look up how to say. And it's very complicated. But I think it might be Theophilus. Theophilus? Don't know. Okay. Theo is what I'm going to call him. Theo Hunter. And it dates back to 1798. So pretty much right after the city was made. Wow. Yeah. Wild. And so according to urban legend... Um, something inside the house often sets off the motion sensors because, you know, there are security guards and obviously they don't want like students vandalizing this property or anything like that, partying there, you know, none of that. So there's motion sensors and security, but it's normally usually late at night in the middle of the night when nobody's around or nobody's inside the house, the motion sensors and cameras will go off, but nothing is there. Security guards will be called out. They go, nobody's there. Happens all the time. Every single night, pretty much. So that's creepy. Yeah, I I don't like that one. <laughs> no, no. And so some of the security guards who work there say they've had to go back, like, five plus times in one night to go check it out. And every single time the house is clear. No explanations at all. Huh. And apparently the motion sensor on the stairwell seems to be the most active area in the house that it gets set off at. And it's almost as if somebody's walking up and down the stairs over and over. So some speculate that it's actually Theo himself taking visits from, like, his room to his grave. Oh, my gosh. What? Yeah. So I don't know if that's just, like, the urban legend or if it's very Can you imagine true. being a ghost and you're like, no. let's just, you know, I'm going <laughs> to just walk through my house and then go out to my grave. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. That is actually crazy. Mm. But, you know, that's what they say. So, yeah, that's the Spring Hill House. Um, There is also, moving along, um, the Spinning Angel of Oakwood Cemetery. Creepy. Also located in Raleigh. Um, It is the beautiful grave marker of a girl named Etta Radcliffe. And there is a statue of an angel. And apparently the person who made the statue made the angel have the same face as Etta. So it's like actually her face in the stone oh. carved. Creepy, in my opinion. I mean, that's cool, though. Yeah, but, I mean, mm, yeah. Creepy. So she was born in 1880, but died like a very sudden, tragic death at the age of 38. And today, she is known as the Spinning Angel of Oakwood or the Ratcliffe Angel. Because at night, allegedly, her tall shadow and angelic outline can be seen peering through the trees or looking around things, creepy, like a black shadow. Um, It's also said that she can be seen moving from, like, the roadway. I don't know how far the road is from the grave, but that's creepy. Um, Mm -hmm. And people also say that her statue is so lifelike that you can see her eyes move and follow you. (gasps) Mm. Mm -mm. Mm Mm-mm. And that reminds me of the Bonaventure Cemetery that I went to, where there's pretty much the same thing, and it was so creepy. I don't like that. I don't like when stone looks a little too human, you know? Yeah. What's that called? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Is there? I guess there's Mm -hmm. a term for it. There's a term when things are a little too human. Man, I forgot what it's called. See, Somebody's screaming at me. Huh? I said, somebody's screaming the answer at me. Oh, okay. I just can't Yeah, I know. Um... (laughs) I uh no but all I can think about when I when you're saying like statues that can move is <laughs> in that movie uh the hunchback of no- Notre Dame <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that 
The gargoyles. <laughs> I think I mentioned that before, but yeah, that's you what did. I think of. Is it, yeah, the gargoyles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've definitely had this conversation before. That's yes. so funny. <laughs> that's funny. But So, like, you know, maybe it's more lighthearted like that, you know. Yeah, maybe it's chill. How, however, yeah. however, I have to break that because, no. Apparently, um, one Halloween night, a bunch of people just went to her grave because, you know, that's when the ghosts are supposed to be closest to you, you know. So, they were a lot of people there. And they say that they saw her head spin 12 times on the statue. What? I don't know if I believe them. Okay, if I saw it, <laughs> right, like if I saw it spin once, I'd be out of there. They counted? They sat there and counted? <laughs> right. Or like, did they just say 12, you know? Yeah. I don't like know. just saw it spin. They're like, oh my gosh, it spun like 12 times. Like I would say that. Probably, yeah. You know? Creepy. I don't yeah, know if I believe I'd, them. But... I'd be out of there. <laughs> yeah, girl, you, you would see the dust. Of me running. <laughs> Literally. Scary. Very scary. So, lastly, last little Raleigh story. There is, um, so this is also on NC State's campus, okay? There is a smokestack that was built in 1925, okay? And it's one of, like, the oldest parts that's still up on NC State's campus. You know, it's, you know, colleges get renovations all the time. So, it's always changing, always growing and you know whatever but the smokestack has remained over all these years it's like one of the things that they're plan on keeping i suppose as long as they can um so it was built originally to help heat the buildings on on campus but what's interesting is that many students that like have to walk by it often say that they get like really cold goosebumps almost every time they walk by it so that's you know Already not a great start. So, like, the opposite of what it's supposed to do? Literally <laughs> the opposite. Um, so, the smokestack is actually attached to the Yarborough steam plant. And apparently under the campus, there's steam tunnels. Oh, Which also is another story for another time. Bunch of urban legends about the tunnels. Okay, yeah, you're going to have to you're gonna have to pick that one back up. Because yeah, I am. But I the thing is, I kind of looked and kind of couldn't find anything. And I was like, hmm, I'm going to have to talk to some of my friends who went to NC State and figure yeah. that out. Because yeah. that's that's that sounds like a story for another day, <laughs> if you ask me. But um, according to the legend, if you look up at the top of the smokestack at night, you can sometimes see the ghost of a student hanging in suspended air like just floating there um and as the legend goes it is actually the ghost of a student who died a tragic death there years ago (gasps) what yeah so the ghost is said to never like do anything just floating there at the top of the smokestack which is very creepy if i can just picture it in my head you know ew Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so did somebody oh go ahead did somebody actually die yeah they did so, so that, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so it was confirmed back in 1989 two students had found an open door up in the smokestack and decided they were going to go up there i mean i would too you know if i found it open so they climbed all the way up to the top and one of them ended up falling to their death <gasps> oh no yeah so you know it is confirmed so it's definitely possible and most students actually testify that they have seen this ghost themselves so very interesting fun fact about me is that so i went to college at uncw in wilmington but my first choice actually was nc state oh really yeah it was and until until i went and visited the campus and i got a really bad vibe i just hated it there it was just (laughs) not like (laughs) the vibe was off I don't know. I can just feel things, you know? And when I, I felt, went to UNCW, yeah. the vibe was all the way on. I was I like, this is where that. definitely I belong. See, that's that's kind of how I was, too. I didn't really have a first choice because mm-hmm. I had just moved to North Carolina. And I was like, I just want to get into tuition. I don't care. Yeah, true. So I went <laughs> to a few different ones. But yeah, UNCW definitely had the vibes. Yeah. It's just, I don't think there's any other way. Like People really just be saying that all the time. But it's true. Like, sometimes you just feel it and you feel it. Yeah, definitely. And which that was really jarring for me because I my whole life was like I'm going to NC State. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then after I went and the vibe was bad, I was like, hmm, 
that's not a good sign. But I was like, it's been my dream my whole life, like whatever. And then they waitlisted me. And I was like, hmm. Mm. And then they're oh. like, you need to write another paper to get in. And then UNCW accepted me. And I was like, you know what? I'm bouncing with UNCW. So it all worked <laughs> out in the end because I'm so glad Whoa. that I didn't go to NC State. Yes, honestly, can you imagine where mm. your life would Mm-mm. be right now? I would be such a different person. You'd be miserable because you didn't know me. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> we would not be here today, <laughs> folks. So, exactly. Clearly, I made the right choice, you know? So, yeah, um, I did actually know about that legend, the smokestack, when I went. And I, I went during the day, though. So, I did look at the smokestack, but I didn't see anything. But also, it was d- during the day. So, I didn't really give it a fair chance. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, that concludes my Raleigh ghost stories. Wow. Yeah. Big wow. Yeah. Real crazy. Raleigh is very interesting and a lot of history there. So, you know, there is, yeah. it's kind of fun. Kind of fun, mm-hmm. honestly. But definitely go check out our Instagram to see pictures from this week. We took yes, pictures and ourselves. I'm gonna, I, yeah, I'm going to post the ones that uh, we took ourselves. So that'll Yay. be cool. Funsies. And go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, please. Please. But I guess I'm off to see a scary movie, and I don't really have anything else for you guys. Yeah, I see the clock ticking away. We got to get you to that movie. Indeed. I have to go be really scared. So I will see you guys next week. Cue the music. (laughs) 